Because when you've got what I've got... Hey everybody, welcome to The Whole Truth, where I'm taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and we are not skipping anything. So if that sounds good to you and you want to come along this journey all the way through the Bible, just reach down, hit the little subscribe button or the follow button, depending on if you're on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, Follow along with me as we go through each day a little deeper into the Bible until we go all the way through. And you can also go over to thewholetruthbiblestudy.com if you want to catch up on the videos. All of the videos are in one convenient location right there on thewholetruthbiblestudy.com. Plus, there's Bible studies. There's ways to support the channel. Other cool things are coming there, so make sure to go over and check that out, thewholetruthbiblestudy.com. But that is not the most important thing, is it? All of that, those are wonderful little side things that technology offers to us, but we have something even better, and that is God's Word. So go Go grab your Bible and turn it open to to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, I love, love, love what Moses does here. As he is continuing to go over with Israel the things that they have already experienced, but he keeps giving them these little nuggets of why. And today, that nugget of why they should follow the Lord and, and reminding them of the things that have happened in the past we get this little nugget right here where Moses reminds them and says, who else has this type of relationship with their God? It's really cool. It's Deuteronomy chapter four. I hope you'll read along with me. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandment of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor, for the Lord your God is has destroyed from among you all the men who followed Baal of Peor. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore be careful to observe them that, excuse me, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people who will hear all the statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there? that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us. For whatever reason, we may call upon him. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in this law, which I have set before you this day? Only take heed to yourselves and diligently keep yourselves, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all all the days of your life, And teach them to your children and your grandchildren, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, gather the people to me, and I will let them hear my words, and they may learn from me all the days they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of heaven, with darkness, with darkness cloud and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. And so he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform the Ten Commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might observe them in the land which you cross over to possess. There it is. Did you see it? We get to the, it's kind of like a bracket, like the beginning and the end. As you hear this, O Israel, as you're going into the land so that you may live. And then we end it with the same thing, that, uh, as, that you might observe them, talking about the law, that you might observe them 
uh, in the land which you cross over to possess. So there's this bracket about we're going into the land, but here's what Moses is telling them. I want you to remember the things that happened. And so he starts out by saying, listen, follow these commandments so that you may live. And then he goes on to remind them what God did to the people at Baal of Peor. And what happened there? You had people who were worshiping Baal. What does that mean that they were worshiping Baal? Does that just mean that, oh, like, you know, they don't believe in the same God that we believe in? Is that what that means? No, no, that's not what that means. What that means is that they believe in a false God, a false God that led them to slaughter their babies and sacrifice their children for their God. A God, a false God, a demon that led them to sexual immorality. That's what they followed. And because of that, God destroyed them. And Moses is saying, remember your God. Remember your God who destroyed them. Remember his laws and his statutes so that you may live. These things anger God. And so if you don't want to anger God, then don't follow Baal of Peor. Follow God. Remember that you all survived. All the people of Baal of Peor, they didn't survive. That's what Moses is telling them. And then you get into that part in verse 7. For what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason we may call upon him. My goodness, it's true of Israel, but it's certainly true of us. Who else can say that they have God so near to them? Israel becomes this kind of typology in this way, but not a typology of Christ, but, but of us. Israel was, had God on their side, but not just on their side, but close to him. Moses reminds them and says, you can come to the Lord for any reason. You want to know where to go next? You can come to the Lord. You want to know if you should build a certain city? You can come and ask the Lord. You need help? You can come and ask the Lord. Is somebody persecuting you? You can come and seek the Lord for any reason. You can come unto him. You know, that is the truth of our God. He allows us to come to him, to be close to him. Who else has a God like our God? Who else has a God who sent his only son, who came here to dwell among us? The word became flesh and tabernacled among us, who lived sinlessly, but didn't live sinlessly just to piously tout of himself. No, God needed no reason for us to understand his holiness, except that we might understand how much we need him because he's holy and we're not. Who else has a God that would take the sins of the people Just, we say that, goodness, the church and Christians and myself, like pastors, we say that so fast and we move on from that, but the idea that Jesus would take your sin upon himself, something you did, he didn't do it. That's like the greatest offense for us, isn't it? Isn't that the one thing that we can't stand the most is when somebody else did something and yet we get the blame? And that's exactly what Christ did. Who else has a God who says, I'll take your blame on myself. I'll take your punishment. Though he didn't do it, he who knew no sin became sin for us. He became sin for us. Why? So that we could become the righteousness of God in him. How wonderful is this Jesus And who else is like him? Literally no one. No one else even comes close. You cannot find another God who sacrificed himself for people. Every other God, every other national God, every other God says, what will you do for him? Our God is the only one who said, I paid the ultimate price for you. Look a little further with me in that text. We were in verse seven in Deuteronomy chapter four, but look what happens next. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in all this law, which I have set before you this day. You know, that's true too. Um, There's a lot of people that want to reference um, the early American founders and say that they weren't Christians. And you know, some of that's true. A lot of it's not, by the way, just before warned, here's a little side note for you. Uh, a lot of that is not true. There are a lot of good Christian um, leaders from early in American history. 
and uh, people now are trying to say they weren't Christian, but certainly if you read their writings and you listen to what they said, they certainly were. Uh, but there were some that were not. There's one guy in particular, his name was Thomas Paine. And Thomas Paine uh, was not a Christian. He was a, not a deist either. He was an atheist. But do you know what else Thomas Paine said? He also said that there was no better law for a country to be founded upon than upon God's law. I mean, the truth of the matter is, if we look at like human history and the way that humans do things, we are cruel, cruel people. I think back to that story of the Tower of Babel, and I always reference that story to point out that you know God wasn't trying to destroy them to keep them from getting to heaven. God didn't think that they were actually going to build a tower all the way to heaven, and somehow he had to destroy that tower to keep them from reaching heaven. No, they were trying to build a tower to the heavens to make a name for themselves because they wanted everybody to be under them. And God destroyed that tower and said, I told you all to disperse because the truth is this, that if one man had ultimate power, can you imagine what he would do to us? I've always liked to point it out this way. You know who established getting a day off? God did. Because if it was man who was choosing from other men how to work, you ever had that boss who would work you to death and wouldn't care? I knew a guy one time worked at a factory. Factory was, had these force ends where they could call people in and if you didn't come in, then they would fire you for it. And I know a guy that was forced in for almost a month straight, day after day after day after day. He was forced in and forced in and forced in and forced in. Why? Because man doesn't care about other men. We'll put men in slavery and we'll work them to death. But it was God who established a day off. It was God who established the Sabbath day and said to keep it holy. You see, my friends, who else has a God who would establish these statutes for us so that we might not just live looking to the future of what we have in him, which we do have that, but that we also might live here. He said, do these things and live. Who else has a God like that? And so I ask you this question today. Do you know him? Do you have a relationship with this God who offers us eternal life? I mean, what other God offers that? You know, there's other religions that you hear that if men have eternal life, that what they get is 70 virgins. Well, what about the virgins? What about them? Is that what they want? Oh, only our God is such a good and merciful God. And by the way, he's the only true God. Do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? That happens through the person of his son, Jesus. If you'll believe in Jesus, then you can have a relationship with God. Who else offers you that? I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll come back tomorrow as we get into Deuteronomy chapter, a little further into Deuteronomy chapter four. I'll see you then.